welcome back to our uh, sessions on learning of curvature and uh, other things so yesterday in the last session we discussed what curvature is i gave you an intuitive idea about what curvature is and i also gave you the formula how to find curvature of a given curve at a point let me very briefly recall today i want to proceed further from there so here is a freehand curve <clears throat> there's just some curve y equal to f of x i pick up a point so uh, this curve equation is given to me y equal to f of x equation is given to me and now i pick up a random point on that i draw so i want to talk of curvature of this curve at some given point at this point what are the curvature is what i want to understand so for that i draw a tangent to the curve at that point and i measure this angle psi this angle is basically uh, the angle the tangent makes with the positive x axis now as point p moves on the curve you can see psi is also changing so <clears throat> if s stands denotes arc length on this curve d psi by ds its magnitude magnitude of that i told you is the curvature basically curvature is as i told when i move on this curve how the angle is changing that is what intuitively curvature means means the so at some point it is very curved for example here you see it is very curved here the angle changes very fast somewhere here the angles it changes very slowly so that is curvature is very small obviously if you have a straight line curvature is uh, you know zero it doesn't change at all so, uh, so uh, yesterday we also saw curvature the bigger the radius of the circle smaller is the curvature because the total amount of curving is less when we take the circle's radius to be large so the, all this we saw yesterday and we also gave a uh, i also gave you a uh, expression for uh, curvature what was that uh, the expression for curvature was something like this so this is the definition of curvature kappa uh, uh, that is curvature is d psi by ds modulus of that it's taking a lot of time mm. so anyway i told you this mod of d psi by ds is curvature at any given point and uh, we don't get psi in terms of s we can't directly dis differentiate this so i told you and also i told you that uh, it's the reciprocal of the curvature which is more uh, which we deal with very often that is called radius of curvature so radius of curvature is denoted rho which is 1 by kappa which is ds by d psi we don't know arc length in terms of psi if i know arc length in terms of psi i can differentiate and find this but we don't know that normally we know y equal to f of x we don't know s is equal to how it is dependent on psi there is an to find rho at any point you have to find dy by dx square it 1 plus dy by dx whole square whole to the power of 3 by 2 divided by second derivative of y at x y with respect to x modulus of that this is the definition or uh, this is the uh, formula for expression for radius of curvature at times dy by dx may become infinity in that case you have to take the reverse of it instead of dy by dx you will take dx by dy uh, and a denominator also instead of d square over by dx square you will take d square x by dy square today what i want to do is i want to give a, a slightly different uh, interpretation for uh, uh, radius of curvature so let us see this yesterday we saw this but i'll repeat once more so this is my uh, I have taken ellipse in this case. Here is the axis, and 
okay, I don't need the axis for this. Let us see. Uh, if I want, I'll take axis. This is an ellipse. The equation is given here. That's not very important for me. And pick a point. E, I, I know the what does curvature mean? Curvature means at this point means you draw a tangent to this curve at this point and see how it the angle between the tangent and positive x-axis changes as I move this on this. Move this. I'm going to give you another definition of it or another interpretation of this uh, uh, curvature and radius of curvature. What you do is you pick this point. Now pick two points very close to this uh, point. You see, I picked up two points very close to you start with any one point it doesn't matter i have picked two points close to it now what one can do is one can draw a circle any uh, you know from your class 12 if you give me three points on the circumference of a circle i can find the equation of the circle remember this if you give me any three points i can find the equation of the circle because three points uniquely determine a circle basically you take chord joining these two chord joining these two perpendicular bisector of both will be the you know center and this will be the radius so you know such things so let us fit in a circle with these three points you see this these are the three points i took on the ellipse and as those points i want points to be very close to each other then at this point i can draw means at this point means including these three points i can draw a circle Correct. This circle uh, has a tangent, and that tangent is same as the tangent at the first point which I picked up, D. Tangent to the ellipse. You see, there are two curves here. One is this curve uh, ellipse. Tangent of ellipse at that point is one thing, and another thing is same thing is the tangent of this circle also. So both these ellipse and the tangent has the same tangent. Sorry, both ellipse and the circle at this point has the same tangent. How did I draw this circle? Remember, I picked up a point. Let me repeat this again. This is important, so I'll go slowly. No problem. Uh, I had an ellipse. I picked up a point D. I pick up two points around D and I mean near D. It doesn't matter. They have to be nearby. It's not that one has to be this side, one has to be that side. It doesn't matter. So I have three points here. Given three points, there is a unique circle passing through that. Uh, once I have a unique circle, uh, I will have uh, a tangent. Means even with whether I have circle or not, I have a tangent to the ellipse. That tangent is tangent to both ellipse and the circle at that point. That is the important point. And now. I can uh, talk of, uh, the, so uh, what did I do? I took an ellipse, took three points very close to each other on the ellipse and fitted in a circle passing through those three points. Now I can talk of uh, inter uh, center of this circle. You see, as, as I move these points, center also will change because circle will also change, right? As I move these points, of course, uh, these points have to be near each other. Otherwise, it's not a uh, correct thing. So these three points point on the ellipse. Near that point, I can fit in a circle such that circle and ellipse touch us exactly at one point and they have a common tangent. That is what I have done here. You can take this point anywhere. You see here, I told you in ellipse, this, this has very high radius of uh, hurry. Curvature is very high in this region. Curvature is very low in this region. Yesterday, I showed this example in the previous session. When I'm here, I have to move a long distance on the ellipse to get some change in uh, angle between the tangent and the positive x-axis. Here, similar thing will be very fast. That means uh, the change in angle is very high here. That is why this has a lot of curvature. This has very small curvature. This part of the ellipse has small curvature. You can see that from here to here, if I travel, the tangent is changing very minimal you can see that uh, forget about that circle for time being just just to recall the whole thing i am doing this mm, which is the tangent oh this is not the tangent uh, one minute i made a mistake 
this is the line I want, not this. So if I move this point, you see here, when I move this point, I get the tangent. Here, this point has to move quite a bit for it to, uh, the tangent to change a little bit. Whereas if the point is here, then you see the it will the angle uh, uh, will change very fast. Which angle? Angle between the tangent and the positive x-axis. You can't see that here, but I showed you this yesterday. As you move this, you see the change in the angle between the tangent and the positive x-axis is very high, which means this radius of this circle is very small. Here, the radius of the circle is very small. Whereas here, if I take all three points here, then you see radius of the circle is very large. As it goes, see here, radius of circle is very large. Which is the radius of circle? Here it is. I'll show you the radius of the circle also in the picture. This is the radius of the circle. See, there is a very large circle. So let us show this just one minute. You see, this is the circle, a very large circle it is. The original ellipse was here. If I take three points near each other, the circle has very large radius. Whereas if at this point, you see, when I take three points here, the radius of the circle is small. Radius of the circle is small, so curvature is high. If I go here, this radius of the circle becomes even smaller. See, your radius of circle has become very small. So what I'm trying to tell again, let me repeat. You pick up any point on the ellipse, try to fit in a circle whose tangent is same as the tangent for the ellipse at that point. At points like this, the circle will have very small radius. Radius of the circle is small. So one by radius is very large. And one by radius was the curvature. Because I told you radius of curvature is one by kappa, one by curvature. So curvature is very high here because radius of curvature is very small. Here, radius of curvature is very large. So the curvature itself is very small. Both you can understand this by these figures. Uh, you can see that uh, you know when the point moves here, for example, all three points are to move there. Otherwise, it's a wrong construction. All three points will move here. Then you'll see that circle is very large. So radius of the circle is very large. You can see our length is 10.5, 10.75. Whereas if the same points are here, then the radius of the circle is very small. Where did I get the circle? Again, let me repeat. You take any point on the ellipse, see the radius of the circle is very small. It is just 1.61. So any point you take on the ellipse, you try to fit in a circle whose tangent is same as the tangent of the ellipse. The radius of that circle is called radius of curvature of the ellipse at that point. Nothing special about ellipse. You can take any curve. You take any curve, take a point, take two points around that. With three points, I get a circle. Radius of curvature, radius of that circle is called ra uh, radius of curvature of the curve at that point. So this also is another way of defining radius of curvature. Either way, the expression is same thing. 1 plus d y by dx whole square whole to the power of 3 by 2 divided by mod of d square y by dx square. That is what radius. So this is another way to look at radius of curvature. In this, you can also find center of curvature. When I say center of curvature of this point, means you draw the circle which will give me radius of curvature, figure out its center. That is the center of curvature of this ellipse at this point. At different points, center of curvature is different. When I put it here, see center of curvature is different now. Center of curvature is coordinates of C. Here it is. This is center of curvature. So center of curvature will depend on which point I'm taking on the ellipse. On the ellipse, if I take a different point, I'll get the circle to be different and center to be different. 
now what i want is i want to show you this particular thing yeah show trace okay good so now when i move my points on the ellipse you can see c is also moving when i move these points on the ellipse you can see c is also moving so i'll get a locus of c you see as i move this i'll get a locus I mean, you know c itself the locus of c itself is what is being shown here these dots this is called evolute of the ellipse the locus of all the centers of curvature is called the evolute of the ellipse itself i'll come back to this again later but i just wanted to mention this now what is the next thing we are going to do is given the curve y equal to f of x in this particular case this ellipse i want to write coordinates of center of curvature that is the next task again vtu has uh, uh, whatever uh, not given the proof of it so i will give you center of coordinate formula for center of coordinates that you will have to remember yeah it's pretty pathetic that you have to remember so much formula but that is what this module is all about this module treat it as a part where you have to learn differentiation well that is what i uh, think so <clears throat> if i have a curve y equal to f of x center of curvature is given by this horrible looking formula x minus dy by dx plus 1 plus dy by dx whole square divided by d square y by dx square comma the center of curvature y plus 1 plus d by dx whole square divided by d square y by dx square it looks horrendous but if you solve a couple of problems then it will become part of you then you will know what to do so alpha is this beta is this alpha is x minus d by dx into 1 plus d by dx whole square divided by d square y by dx square beta that is the y coordinate of the center of curvature is y plus 1 y in plus 1 plus d over dx whole square divided by d square over by d square we'll come back to this again later uh, right now what i want to do is i want to focus on finding radius uh, yeah radius of curvature what is the radius of curvature of different curves let us solve a few examples on this we will start by the most elementary thing oh, by the way this also we need to know if the curve is given in polar form this is the formula r square plus d r by d theta whole square whole to the power of 3 by 2 d theta square i know it's pretty horrendous but that is how it is so you have to know these formula by heart otherwise you won't be able to solve problems in the exam but in real life you can refer to these things in any standard uh, textbooks or web resources so what i am trying to tell is x y equal to f of x then the radius of curvature is given by this formula this formula is what you need to remember 1 plus y1 square whole to the power of 3 by 2 by mod y2 y1 means d y by dx y2 means d square y by dx square and center of coordinates are given by this and if the curve is given in the form of polar form that is r equal to f theta which is the relation between radius and the angle then it you will have to find dr by d theta and plug in d square r by d theta square and plug in all the values in this horrible looking formula then you will get a radius of curvature both formula are there one is for y equal to f of x another is r equal to f theta i'll show you specific examples so let us find the most obvious one find the radius of curvature of the for the circle x square plus y square equal to 4 so this is actually a circle so radius of curvature means same as radius correct so Oh, it's radius. We know is two because this is the standard form x square plus y square equal to r square r equal to two. So answer whatever it is, it must be two. So let us check that. So how do I radius of curvature by dx d square by d x square? That's what I'm going to do here. So this is given x square plus y square equal to four. So I'll try to find d by dx. That's we have done already several times. If you differentiate this with respect to x i'll get 2x plus 2y dy by dx equal to 0 which means dy by dx is equal to minus x by y which means and then so this is one part dy by dx is minus x by y i also want d square y by dx square how do i get that you differentiate this once more or apply quotient rule to this i here for 
for me it's easier for me to differentiate this once more so i have done that if you differentiate 2x with respect to x i'll get 2 differentiate y plus 2 by dx square that is um, uh, if you take the rest of them this side 2 will get cancelled and 1 by y will be in the denominator and the numerator will have 1 plus dy by dx whole square that's what i have written here 1 plus dy by, d, dy by dx whole square plus 1 divided by y but i know dy by dx is same as minus x by y so i substitute that here and simplify i get minus 4 by y cube so what, what are we doing uh, dy by dx for this circle x square plus y square equal to 4 at any point dy by dx is minus x by y and at any point at the same point d square over by dx square is minus 4 by y cube this is standard differentiation class 11 differentiation there's nothing else in this now plug in these two things remember this dy by dx is minus plug in these in this formula rho is equal to 1 plus dy by dx whole square all to the power of 3 by 2 divided by mod d square y by dx square this you have to remember so dy by dx is minus x by y and d square y by dx square is 4 by y cube. So I substitute both, uh, so mod d square y by dx cube. So if there is no mod here, it, I would have had minus 4 by y cube. Remember this, d square y by dx square is minus 4 by y cube. Because I have a mod, it will become 4 by y cube. So I simplify this, 1 plus minus x by y whole square means x square by y square. So plus 1 is x square plus y square by y cube because it's y square whole to the power of 3 by 2 similarly x square plus y square whole to the power of 3 by 2 divided by y square whole to the power of 3 by 2 is y cube and in the denominator i'll have 4 by y cube so these two y cubes will get cancelled and then i'll get x square plus y square i know is 4 that is what is given equation x square plus y square is 4 so i'll replace x square plus y square by 4 so 4 to the power of 3 by 2 by 4 which is equal to 2 which is what is expected. The radius of curvature of this circle is, of course, 2. If it were anything other than 2, I would have been surprised and I would have thought this formula is wrong. So now it is correct as is expected. Note, unless you have this mod, radius of curvature would have been negative. If you are taken, if you are, if you don't take this mod in your definition of dy by d in a row, if you don't take mod, if you take d square y by dx square, then here radius of curvature of circle would have been negative two, which is not, not a correct thing. So magnitude is important. So this is equal to two, which is what we expect, and that's what. Let us try to find radius of curvature. I won't show too much. Let's quickly go through some examples. Find the radius of curvature for the parabola y square equal to 4x. How do we do this? So remember, what does it mean? You draw the parabola, take any point on the parabola, draw a circle passing through that point and parabola. I mean, both the parabola and the circle must have common tangent at that point and find the radius of that circle. That's what we are doing. But uh, the geometrically, it's difficult to do that. So what we do is, uh, we algebraically or calculus wise we, what we do is you differentiate this with respect to x i'll get 2y dy by dx equal to 4 which means dy by dx is equal to 2 by y and differentiate this once more so i'll get usual product rule 2 dy by dx into dy by dx plus 2y d square y by dx square is 0 so d square y by dx square is i take this 2 gets cancelled i take this whole thing this side dy by dx whole square by y but dy by dx i just saw it is 2 by y so uh, when I substitute this, I'll get uh, for dy by dx, if I substitute 2 by y, I get 2 by y whole square by y. So which is minus 4 by y cube. It so happens d square over by dx square is same for this and uh, circle. Mm, that's coincidence. Uh, of course, there's a lot of theory between why they are the same. They're both quadratic, basically. Mm, uh, conic sections with some common things. I won't bother about that too much. Uh, dy by dx is 2 by y, d square over by dx square is minus 4 by y cube. Substitute all this in this horrible formula. So dy by dx is 2 by y whole square and d square over by d, mod d square over dx square will become 4 by y cube. So I simplify this. It's just algebraic manipulation. So um, y square plus 2 square, which is 4 by y cube. Cube, how did I get cube? Because y square whole to the power of 3 by 2. Understand this, this y square plus 2 square divided by y square, whole to the power of 3 by 2.
So y square plus 2 square, which is y square plus 4 whole to the power of 3 by 2, divided by y square whole to the power of 3 by 2, which is y cube. And denominator is mod of 4 by y cube, which is 4 by y cube. So y cubes get cancelled, and I'm left with y square plus 4 by 4 whole to the power, this to the power of 3 by 2. Uh, but y square is 4x. That's the given equation. Y square, wherever I see y square, I can write it 4x. So I'll write 4x plus 4 by 4, this whole to the power of 3 by 2. So if I take 4 common out from here, 4 to the power of 3 by 2, that is 2 cube, uh, sorry, 4 power half is 2, 2 cube is 8, 8 by 4 is 2, correct. What I've written here is correct. These are elementary exponents uh, manipulation, which you should know. So this is the answer. This is the uh, what is it? Radius of curvature of parabola at various points, depending on x. So here you see parabola's radius of curvature changes. It depends on the value of x. Whereas in the previous case, in this circle case, radius of curvature did not depend on x. It's constant radius of curvature. Hence, constant curvature. Here, curvature is 1 by this. This is radius of curvature. 1 by this is curvature. So as x increases, radius of curvature also increases. So that's what I can understand from this. And now I can get, we have seen it when we did polar uh, curves, we plotted these curves. Find the radius of curvature for the catenary y is equal to c cos hyperbolic x by c. So um, we know what this is. This, some of you are maybe seeing it for for the first time so i am giving you a very small very brief introduction to what are these hyperbolic cause this is called it's written c o s h cosh also some people pronounce but that's not a correct way to do it the correct thing to say is hyperbolic cause these are called hyperbolic function what is this hyperbolic function hyperbolic function by definition is this cause co uh, hyperbolic cos t is e power t plus e power minus t by 2 and we also have its brother sine HT that is hyperbolic sign. So hyperbolic cos and hyperbolic sign, both the definitions are given here. Hyperbolic cos t is e power t plus e power minus t by 2. Hyperbolic sign is e power t minus e power minus t by 2. These are very beautiful functions. You try to plot it out. I told you you can try to use Desmos or GeoGebra and try to plot these curves. They're very nice curves, they're very beautiful properties. Why are they called caution shine? I mean, that's another way of pronouncing hyperbolic cos, hyperbolic, what is cos or sign about it? They satisfy certain trigonometric relations. The type of relations with cos, cos and sign satisfy, cos hyperbolic and sine hyperbolic also satisfy that. You please play around with these functions, plot these functions and change. For example, you try to find cos 2t, cos hyperbolic 2t, how does it look? You plot these things and see. Uh, one of the most interesting relations is this cos h square that is hyperbolic cos square minus hyperbolic sin square is one. It's very easy to see. Its square is you know a square plus b square plus 2ab. This is a square plus b square minus 2ab. So if you subtract one from the other, everything gets cancelled. I'll get 4 in the numerator, 4 in the denominator. It becomes 1. Very easy. Um, just I don't have time energy to do all those things, but I'm telling you these relations. This is important relation and we will use we also have things like derivative of cos hyperbolic is derivative of this derivative of this is derivative of this plus derivative of this divided by 2 derivative of this is e power t itself derivative of this is minus e power minus t so when i take derivative of this i'll get e power t minus e power minus t by 2 which is same as sin ht so uh, hyperbolic cos then is hyperbolic cos you can see the derivative of this is e power t plus e power minus t by 2 which is cos hyperbolic so cos it's like sine and cos with a negative sign there when you go from cos to sine but here cos hyperbolic to sine hyperbolic you don't have to go there's no negative thing there one is uh derivative of the other so remember this these are standard functions you should play around for this course for this lecture or this part of the module, you need to know these two uh, these uh, two things. One is this relation between cos hyperbolic and sine hyperbolic and derivatives of cos hyperbolic and sine hyperbolic.
So why do I want that? Because if I want to find the radius of curvature of this curve, cos hyperbolic x by c, uh, I have to differentiate. I have to find dy by dx and d square over by dx square. So if you differentiate cos hyperbolic x by c, I'll get c into derivative of this is sin hyperbolic in sin hyperbolic of x by c into 1 by c because the chain rule derivative of this also so that's what i have written here dy if y is equal to c cos hyperbolic x by c dy by dx is c sin hyperbolic x by c into 1 by c c c gets cancelled i get sin hyperbolic x by c now i want to find d square over dx square so differentiate this once more so derivative of this is derivative of sine is sine hyperbolic cos hyperbolic so cos hyperbolic x by c into derivative of x by c a derivative of x by c is 1 by c so i'll get d square y by dx square is 1 by c cos x, x by c that is cos hyperbolic x by c but cos hyperbolic x by c uh, by definition it is y by c remember this cos hyperbolic x by c is y by c i will maybe i'll want to use that so let us see if you want to use i'll use that later so I know dy by dx and d square y by dx square. Plug it all in this formula. So rho is 1 plus dy by dx whole square all to the power of this formula. So dy by dx is sine square. Sorry, dy by dx is sine h x by c. So that will become sine square h by c. And d square y by dx square is cos x by cos hyperbolic x by c by c. So simplify this. 1 plus sine square is cos hyper 1 plus sine hyperbolic square is cos hyperbolic square. So I'll write c. Where did this c come from? This c came from the denominator of denominator, which goes to numerator. So this is c. Uh, numerator is cos hyperbolic square whole to the power of 3 by 2 divided by cos hyperbolic x by c. Cos hyperbolic square whole to the power of 3 by 2, 2, 2 will get cancelled and I'll get cos hyperbolic power 3. But denominator there is on cos hyperbolic, so they'll get cancelled and I'll get c cos hyperbolic square x by c but cos hyperbolic x by c is y by c so its square is y square by c square so once c will get cancelled i'll get y square by c so the expression for radius of curvature is y square by c that's all i wanted to say this example so understand there's nothing much very deep happening here geometrically there are a lot of significant things happening but algebraically all you need to do is give an equation give an equation of the curve Differentiate this twice, once to find d over dx, once more to find d square over dx square, plug in both these into this expression. You get radius of curvature. That's all. Let's do one more problem. Find the radius of curvature of the folium x cube plus y cube equal to 3axy. You should plot these curves. I already done many of these when I introduced polar curves and other in general curves but you should play around with this with using desmos or algebra so this curve at this point of effect whether this point is actually on this curve how do i check that you put x equal to 3a by b 3a by 2 whole cube y cube also 3a by 2 whole cube so 3a by 2 whole cube is 27 a cube by 8 27 a cube by 8 plus 27 a cube by 8 is 27 a cube by 4 here also you'll get the same thing as you can see because at x 3a by 2 3a by 2 3 3 3 27 a cube because everybody has a and uh, y8 uh, a by 2 so a by 2 a by 2 uh, by 4 sorry 27 a cube by 4 that's what you get this side also that's what you get this side also so this point is indeed on this curve and uh, uh, um, Again, it's the same thing. Find dy by dx. If you differentiate this given equation, x cube plus y cube equal to 3axy, you'll get 3x square plus 3y square dy by dx chain rule equal to 3ay plus 3ax dy by dx. I'm using product rule for this. A is constant, so I take out 3a. xy derivative is y plus x dy by dx. That's what I have written here. 3a I have taken common, so I have written it here. So dy, solve for dy by dx in this. dy by dx is ay minus x square by y square minus ax. And at, I want all this, I want radius of curvature at this point. So I'll try to find dy by dx at this point. So at this point means you put x is equal to 3a by 2, y equal to 3a by 2 in this. So you get this dy by dx at this point 3a by 2, 3a by 2 is you substitute y equal to 3a by 2 and x equal to 3a by 2, you will get minus 1. You can check these things. 
similarly, differentiate. I want d square over by dx square. So uh, what I will do is I'll differentiate this once more with respect to uh, x. So when I do that, which one should I differentiate? Uh, this equation. I will differentiate with respect to x. Then I'll get 6x plus 6y dy by dx plus 3y square d square y by dx square. So that's what I get here. I made a mistake here. Oh, no, uh, differentiating this equation, I get this, correct. There's nothing wrong in this. So I just recall this equation. 3x square, if you differentiate, I'll get 6x with respect to x. Differentiate with respect to x. So differentiate 3y square dy by dx. I'll get first differentiate y square. So I'll get 6y dy by dx into dy by dx. That's what is 6y dy by dx into dy by dx. Next, I'll keep y square con and differentiate this. So I'll get 3y square d square over by dx square. That's what is written here. And uh, right hand side also differentiate with respect to x. So I'll get 3a dy by dx. That's the term here. And here I'll get 3a dy by dx. If you differentiate x, that is 3a dy by dx plus 3a x into d square y by dx square. So solve for d square y by dx square. You will get <clears throat> at 3a by 2, 3a by 2, this value is, I mean, I basically I'm not interested in expression for 3a by 2, uh, sorry, expression for d square by dx square. I just want it at 3a by 2, 3a by 2. So I substituted all this here because simplification becomes easy. So d square over by dx square, you can, as you can see, is minus 32 by 3a. You have to solve this. Uh, this is, I don't waste my time on this. Uh, <clears throat> so now I know d square, dy by dx at 3a by 2, 3a by 2. I know d square by dx square at 3a by 2, 3a by 2. So substitute all this in this mess. So rho is 1 plus dy by dx whole square whole to the power of 3 by 2 divided by mod d square y by dx square. So I know dy by dx at that point was minus 1 and d square by dx square at that point was 32 by 3a. So I substitute all these things and you will get this 3a root 2 by 16. Means you can check all this 1 plus minus 1 whole square. So this is 2. Uh, 2 to the power of 3 by 2 will be 2 root 2 and then 3a by 32 and 2 gets cancelled. So you get 3a root 2 by 16. Good. Uh, similarly, you have other, you can take various examples of various curves. So this is another curve. Y is equal to log secant x by a. I know this is, doesn't make sense unless you see the curve, but I don't have time to show you every curve, but I've shown you how you can plot these curves. Use GeoGebra, use Desmos. You can just plot these curves very easily. They look very beautiful. Uh, log secant x by a. Uh, this is called catenary of uniform strength. The have some real physical uh, meaning why they are called these. I have no time and energy to do all those things in this respect of x. So I into derivative of secant x by a, which is secant x by a into tan x by a into derivative of x by a, which is 1 by a. That's what I have written here. Uh, where did I get this a from? Mm -hmm dy by dx is 1 by secant x by a into derivative of secant x by a. Derivative of secant x by a, secant x by a into tan x by a into 1 by a. I don't know where I'm getting this a from. Mm. I have to see. I'll, I can't think right now, but one will. I'll check this and get back to this. In case there's a correction, I'll come back to this later. So <clears throat> this is dy by dx which is secant x by a, secant x by a gets cancelled, a, a gets cancelled. Uh, how did I get this? I don't know. I'll think over this. Uh, differentiating this equation once more, d square y by dx square, I'll get this. Because tan x by a derivative is secant square x by a into 1 by a. That's what I have written here. So dy by dx and d square y by dx square, both I have the expressions. So I'll write here. Yeah, there is no A here as far as I can see. This A is a mistake. So this is 1 by A tan x by A or what? I don't know. I'll check this carefully and get back to you. Uh, right now, I'll assume this is correct. Uh, so I'll substitute the value of dy by dx and d square y by dx square in this expression. So this is 1 plus tan square x by A divided by secant square x by A by A. How did I get this? Here it is d square y by dx square. So I substitute that and evaluate. I get a secant x by a. 
so this is how you have to, to basically understand y equal to f of x curve is given dy by dx you find d square over by dx square you find so plug in both the values in this so let's see one more example and maybe i'll stop today's session mm, find the radius of the curvature of the curve root x plus root y equal to 4 at the point where it cuts y equal to x let us check that so where does it cut at y equal to x that means i have to first find the common intersection point of root x plus root y equal to 4 and y equal to x that means i have to substitute y equal to x in this that's how i find common point if i substitute y equal to x i'll get root x plus root x equal to 4 which means uh, root x plus root x equal to 4 means 2 root x is 4 which means x equal to 4 if x equal to 4 then uh, y is also equal to 4 because y equal to x so point point of intersection is 4 comma 4 just check whether it is true 4 equal to 4 yes 4 comma 4 is on this line and this also root 4 plus root 4 is 4 so this it's on this curve also so 4 comma 4 is indeed a point of intersection of this so i want to find radius of curvature of this this curve at 4 comma 4 now do the usual thing find d over d equal to 4 this must be root 2 not root 2 root 4 root 4 this is a mistake this is uh, root 4 by root 4 that is 2 by 2 and differentiate the equation once more answer is the same but here it's not root 2 by root 2 it's root 4 by root 4 this later My computer has become very slow. Answer is correct, no problem. But just uh, the working out is wrong. So this is. So differentiating this equation once more, you get, uh, you differentiate this equation once more, or I know dy by dx is root y by root x. So differentiate this once more, that means use quotient rule. So root x whole square, which is x, root x into derivative of numerator with a minus sign there, I return this here, minus numerator into uh, derivative of the denominator. UV rule is what I applied, and you simplify this, you will get this. Mm. So here again, uh, this uh, please change this to root four by root four. Answer is minus one is correct. So at four comma four, d square over by dx square is this much. So I'll substitute for x four and y also four. So I'll get one by four. So now I know dy by dx at four comma four is minus one. D square over by dx square at four comma four is one by four. So I'll substitute both that in this equation. So I'll get a numerical num a number as an answer because here I'm finding the radius of curvature at a given point. This means, I mean, you substitute all this, you will get this eight root two. This means, remember, for this curve, root x plus root y equal to four, this curve, where this curve intersects y equal to x is four comma four. At that point, if you draw a circle of radius 8 root 2, that will have same tangent as this curve. That's what all this means. And radius of curvature is 8 root 2 means that there will be a circle of this radius which will fit in exactly at the three points on near 4 comma 4 on that curve. Root x plus root y equal to 4. uh polar form maybe i learned basically uh given any curve y equal to fx how to find radius of curvature basically find dy by dx d square over dx square put both the values in this expression then you are done with uh, finding uh, the radius of 